My name is Tom Schumann. Jane Albright. I'm Shannon Washam. Jim Wilson. I'm John Burton. My name is Sonny Strange. Uh, my name is Bill Jerconi. My name is Destry Cloud. My name is Susan Hendricks. My name is Ben Husk. Because if people are hungry, then you can't reach them. If they're concentrating on the fact that their bellies are empty, or they're cold, or they're worried about their children having something to wear the next day, it's really hard to get the message to them about what Christ can do for their lives. And I also think that by doing things like this, they see that we don't want anything in return, and that's Christ's love. So by giving and not wanting anything in return, they see that there are people out there that represent God, I think, and then by doing such, they know that there is a God, that there is something beyond just us, and they can see that they're worthwhile and that they're worth helping and that God loves them too. Uh, there's not an individual church around that can respond to all these needs. It's only as we work together are we able to put together a network of assistance, providing food, providing clothing, uh, and shelter for the homeless. Uh, all of these things would be impossible for us to do individually. But together we've been able to see it accomplished and have goals for even greater things ahead. You, if you focus too much on yourself, you know, you don't really care about what's happening to everybody else. You'd say God has given you a, a gift and you're able to use those gifts to help someone else and that's the satisfaction. It, it's as simple as that. Because I receive so much more of a blessing when I do this uh, then when I do go on a vacation, I have a free heart that I have given back to the Lord, just a portion of what He has given to me. Anything you do to help people is a Christian work. Uh, anything you do to help people have a better quality of life, and then while you're working with tools, you also have a chance to share. And uh, the most important thing in life is people, it's not the buildings. It's the relationship with people. Buildings come and buildings go, but there's only so many people. And these are folks that have just uh, ran into a wall here. And uh, I think uh, the whole staff and the volunteers that come here uh, do offer hope for these folks. Um, I'm able to uh, give of my time freely, and you know, the difference between this and working is I get to do what I want here, not what somebody's told me I have to do. And there's joy in work like that and just being able to interact with the people um, and learn more about yourself really as you learn more about them. It gives you, makes you very thankful for what you have. I've also uh, enjoyed working with the uh, young people that, that are involved in the program because it gives me an opportunity to, to teach them how to do some of the things that I've, I've done. I'm a Christian, so through my Christian faith, I always try to have a spirit of humility, whatever I do, but being here, it really humbles you, and it makes you really appreciate what you have and, you know, how you go through your daily life, because you come here and, you know, some people just aren't as well off and just aren't as fortunate, and you have to remind yourself that, you know, just because you have more doesn't mean you can treat anyone less, and you come here and you um, just fully commit yourself to these people and they appreciate it so much and you can see that and you can feel that too. And I saw Appalachian Outreach as a way to not only help families with those basic needs that really all of us in the Christian realm were all compelled to try to do what we can do to alleviate somebody else's suffering but I saw it also as a way for us to get in there and share the Word of God and and help them see their spiritual needs. So I believe my own personal background has allowed me to, first of all, have a little more compassion, uh, to be able to recognize when people are wanting to help themselves but they don't necessarily have the opportunity to. But it's also helped me to hold other people to a higher standard. Whenever I have families that come in at the Samaritan House, I have a full expectation for them to be able to look for a job. They need to have a sense of ownership for their family, for their children, and provide, no matter how small that is, to help the kids uh, learn and to, to get into a cycle of work ethic, to, to not depend on others to help them, but to recognize their own strength. Uh, I call this sort of backdoor evangelism. You get in and help somebody with your hands and encourage them and strengthen them, and along the way, 
you're showing them Christ and they're telling them about Christ. But more often than not, he works through just simple, everyday people who are, are reaching out and trying to help. So I always try to tie in the fact that Samaritan House, where they're staying, is living proof of that. You know, had it not been for the Samaritan House, where would they be? You know, had it not been for the people who, who volunteer and come here, where would they be? You know, so that, you know, there are people here willing to give up their hearts, give up their time, give up their love to help them. And when I get up before them, after they've, most of them have eaten, I'll say, now we're ready for a story from the carpenter from Nazareth. Then I don my hat, and that's always been my signal to me and to my audience that I am now the carpenter from Nazareth, and I'll tell one of his parables. And uh, every year the groups come back and they say, well, we want to be sure that the carpenter from Nazareth is going to be here for breakfast. <laughs> And when we come down to the end for the closing of the week and our work was done, I think the client touched our hearts, all of us, as she began to share of her faith in Christ and how that she saw us as being a part of what God was doing and providing and helping her. And it was more than just a touching moment. It wasn't just my eyes that began to fill up. I looked around and saw these young people who had been working and some of them learning for the first time how to do some of those things and their eyes were filling up too and when I saw them embracing and hugging her and re not only receiving her expression of gratitude but being able to share from their insides to her I really think though that moment will always stand out in my mind. It wasn't more than a couple of days that Clyde brought me this small uh, Pringles can full of coins, mostly pennies. And uh, I think it was $2.87 that was in that small can. And I said, Clyde, what's this for? And he said, I want to help those hungry people. He said, I brought this to help those hungry people. And the thing that amazed me is Clyde, if I'd ever met a family that was hungry, it was him and his wife. All I had was Samaritan House. So, and they were like my family. I mean, they, they encouraged me. They you know, they, when I needed a hug, they were there. You know, when I needed to cry, they were there. Um, any, anything that I needed, they were there. That's the, the whole idea of, of the Samaritan House as far as I'm concerned because they're there to help you, and they did. I mean, like I said earlier, um, I don't know where I would be today without them. Because of my own children, I saw a little boy get off the school bus at Samaritan House, and I thought, how embarrassing a boy that has peer pressure for an eight-year-old boy to get off the school bus in front of a homeless shelter, even though it's a, a very nice place. Later, he was helping me, and as I was walking down the stairs of Samaritan House to get a tool, I looked up, and he said, Mr. Jim, I want to tell you something. I turned around and he said, I want to tell you that my mom and my, me want to thank you for the Christian home that you've given us. And uh, you know, I, for an eight-year-old boy to do that unprompted, to say thank you for this home that we're living in, that was an amazing thing because I knew it was the partners who had worked to make the doors of that Samaritan house stay open and uh, the gifts that people give, had given. Fortunately, uh, God sometimes has a bigger dream than we do. And so as a result of that, we've had the property behind me donated, and that's a little over 10 acres. So you can imagine our excitement whenever we realize that, you know, God has such a grand idea of what He wants for His children, and I'm just glad that we can be a part of that. But we've been working very diligently towards the new Samaritan house and anticipating that that will be built in the next couple of years. And so um, I ask for your prayers as we continue to move forward with that. But this 10 acres is going to be an enormous um, blessing to the ministry as we develop it, not only for the Samaritan house, but we also have a pavilion area and a, a playground area. Um, and we'll also probably move the home repair ministry to this location in a few years. So uh, continue to pray for that and, and join us in our efforts.